There it is. The range map. Yeah, but people bird their whole lives not seeing one, so if you want to see one, this is your shot. We're getting it. We are in one of the premier birding destinations in the Midwest, the Saxon Bog. The Saxon Bog is composed of around 300 square miles of land, including a variety of habitats and even a few towns. A mix of different habitats provides ideal conditions for many boreal species of bird. Earlier in the day, we got looks at sharp-tailed grouse, American three-toed woodpeckers, black-backed woodpeckers, and evening grosbeaks. While these birds are tough to find in most places, out of all the birds in the bog, the ones that draw the most attention are the owl species. The most notable are the great gray owl, the northern hawk owl, and the boreal owl. All three of these species are at home in the boreal forest. Great gray owls and northern hawk owls are winter residents at Saxim and occasionally stray even farther south. The boreal owl is a rare visitor to North America, but Saxim is one of the best places to see one in the wild. We planned on spending the rest of the day searching for these three species, but first we made a stop at the Welcome Center. At the visitor center's feeders were many common red poles. The common red pole is a small finch with streaked undersides, white wing bars, and a red patch on their crown. Males also display a reddish pink wash on their breast. Common red poles travel in flocks and feed primarily on small seeds. In winter, they can eat up to 42% of their body mass in seeds each day. These finches are eruptive and can be found as far south as the central United States due to their erratic migration. Mixed in with the common red poles was a single hoary red pole. Hoary red poles look extremely similar to common red poles but have a more frosted appearance with limited or no streaking on the flanks, rump, and undertail. In addition, hoary red poles have a smaller bill and are more rare in the United States. There has been much debate on whether or not to lump the common and hoary red pole into one species. For the time being, the two remain separate. From the Welcome Center, we began our quest to find the rare boreal owl. While boreal owls are an annual visitor to Sac Sim, they rarely stray much farther south. In addition, their small size and camouflage makes them difficult to find even if they are in the area. We had heard reports of a boreal owl seen at Sac Sim a week before, but no more recent reports. We drove the roads carefully scanning when we came upon a group of birders and photographers intently focused on something in the bushes. We eagerly walked out of the car, hoping that the bird causing the commotion was in fact a boreal owl. Lands is out. Oh my way. god! Oh, mother... Let's go, let's go! Keep it down, you psychopaths! Oh. Earlier in the day, we talked about just how rare this bird was and what a great opportunity it would be to see one. There it is, the range map. Yeah, but people bird their whole lives not seeing one, so if you want to see one, this is your shot. We're getting it. Is it any better over here? Yeah. Let's get it right in the middle here. Over here Tucked away in the thicket was the boreal owl we were hoping for. Boreal owls can be found in the boreal forests of Canada and the northern United States. They are small owls with large heads, a gray underside with brown streaking, a brown back, and a gray facial disc. Due to their small size and camouflage, they can be extremely difficult to find when roosting. Boreal owls eat small rodents, birds, and insects. They nest in tree cavities and nest boxes with no nesting material. Boreal owls display the most extreme reverse sexual dimorphism of any American owl, as females are much larger than males. The boreal owl was one of the most difficult birds in the area to find. We were excited that we were lucky enough to see it on our first day in Minnesota. After getting some views of the owl, we left the crowd behind and went off in search of some more birds. Just under two hours later, we made our second epic owl find of the afternoon. On a scenic road, we had a close encounter with the species we had started the day with. We got a great gray owl right up here perched on one of the top of these trees. He is very majestic. The great gray owl can be identified by its gray color and tall appearance. In fact, they are the tallest owl found in the United States. 
However, they are mostly feathers and weigh around 2.5 pounds. Great horned and snowy owls actually weigh more than great gray owls do. They inhabit the boreal forests of the northern United States with some groups living in the western mountains. In search for food, they sometimes move further south and can also be found in Scandinavia, Russia, Siberia, and Mongolia. They feed mostly on small mammals and eat around seven vole-sized mammals every day. That. Yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. Oh my god. Crazy. With two out of the three owl species checked off of our list, there was just one more we hoped to find, the northern hawk owl. However, after looking for two hours and darkness fast approaching, it seemed our luck had finally run out. Suddenly, a shape in the treetops caught our attention. It was in fact none other than the northern hawk owl. Just when we thought things couldn't get any better, the bird swooped down from its high perch and landed just yards away from us. The northern hawk owl inhabits boreal forests of the United States as well as other continents and is an eruptive species. This means if food is scarce in the north, they will migrate further south in search of it. Their stomach is barred with brown and white and the top of their head is helmeted with gray and brown speckles. Their face is white and outlined with black. They are relatively small at 14 to 18 inches long at adulthood, similar to the size of an American crow. They are skilled hunters by sight and sound and can detect prey from up to a half mile away and can hear prey under one foot of snow. All right, so what was your guys' favorite bird we saw? I like the great gray owl in the forest. Mine would be also the great gray. Billy? I think the three-toed woodpecker. Was that, that one, one you wanted cool. to see the most? That, one, that and the boreal owl are the two I wanted to see the most. And you got them. And got them. You did it. We rocked it. I don't understand how this happened. <laughs> <laughs> With the success we had in the bog, we plan on spending our last day in Minnesota going even farther north to find the elusive boreal chickadee. We headed back to the hotel to plan for the day ahead. All right, well, this is our room where we're gonna be staying for the next two days. And, um, Rye, how many layers do you have on today? Uh, like four. I took off my coat, and I have a base layer, and then I have this shirt, so four. Yeah. I just got three. I have this shirt, this shirt, and then a coat. Yeah, it was, it's been pretty cold, so hopefully it's supposed to, what is it, winter weather advisory tonight yep. or yep. something like that, so we'll see how things shake up tomorrow and what we're able to go see. It's battery charging time. At the hotel, we watched as a blizzard moved in and blanketed the surrounding area. We waited to see if the snow would subside enough for us to even attempt to go out the next morning, putting our hopes of finding a boreal chickadee in jeopardy. So this is how it looks outside the window after like being here for a half hour. So it's a good thing we got here when we did. Wow, that, that was, was cool. incredible. <laughs> that was definitely worth the day right there. It's all I needed. Bill told me he's not impressed. Bill better go home. <laughs> <laughs>